Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And um, I've asked this question before. Every now and then I like to take your pulse on this. Because I think it's key to getting as many chicks as you can. As you probably know, if you are a regular listener to this program, I have stated, much to the chagrin of women all over America, that the best way to get chicks and keep chicks around is to treat them like crap. Now, when I say to treat a woman like crap, let me be really clear about what I mean so nobody gets confused. In no way should it be implied, inferred, or spoken directly, for that matter, that I'm in favor of violence of any kind. On the contrary, anybody who commits a violent act against anybody should be punished to the fullest extent of the law. And that goes for women as well as men. Anybody who commits a violent act should be in jail. That's where they belong. I can't make it any clearer than that. When I say treat women like crap, we're not talking about violence. Because um, violence is not only illegal, but um, it's just wrong. It's wrong to treat people in a way that you yourself would not want to be treated. It, it's just wrong. Whether it's legal or illegal. No. No. What, um, what I'm talking about is that women respect men who are dishonest, unreliable, who put them on ice. These are the things you need to do to keep a woman around. These are the things you need to do to get women interested in you. Say you'll call later. Don't call for three days. Say you'll see her Friday night. Then forget to tell her where, forget to confirm, then don't answer your phone. Give her backhanded compliments. I, I don't think you look fat in that dress. I don't care what anybody says. I like a chick with little meat on her bones. Don't listen to what anybody says about you. I think you're great. No matter what all my friends think, no matter what my family thinks, I think you're spectacular. See, these sound like compliments, but in reality, you are eroding whatever little bit of self-esteem she has left by saying these things, because she can't nan you on them. How could she be mad at you for saying she's great, she's wonderful, she's spectacular? Or that that little beer gut she has is cute, you love it. That's how you keep them in line. They come back for more and more and more. Never forget that the nice guys are the ones who sit late at night having a cup of tea with the women who talk about the men they're having sex with. And the men they're having sex with are invariably jerks, a-holes, creeps. Now... Many of you boys have been deceived into believing that those guys are wrong and you're right. But who's getting laid? The guys who treat women like crap. I mean, think about it. Have you ever done that? Have you ever sat late at night with either through a telephone call or a woman showing up at your house late at night knocking at the door? She knocks at your door. And you let her in. He did it again. He did it again. He did my best friend. But I love him. Have you ever sat and listened to a woman cry or whine about her boyfriend? The one who continually treats her like crap and she never breaks up with him? Think. That's why she never breaks up with him. Isn't that obvious? Why don't people see this? 
It's obvious why she stays with him. Because he give her what gives her what she wants, what she thinks she deserves, to be treated like crap. That's why they're inseparable. How many, how many times have you or one of your boys said, I bought her flowers, I got her cards, I got her a teddy bear on her birthday, I took her to the most expensive restaurant in town, I flew her away on vacation, we did everything together, I did everything I could, I showed up, I, I wrote little notes and I put them in her travel bag, blah, 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 and, and she still screwed my best friend. How many times have you or one of your boys said that? Think hard. Had you forgotten her birthday, forgotten your anniversary, never ever said, hey, we've been together a whole six days as of right now. Had you avoided any of that? Had you not complimented her on the way she looks, the way she dresses, the way she cuts her hair? Had you tried not to notice all the little things she did? If she made you a meal, you just simply ate it. You did not compliment her on what a great job she did. This is how you keep a woman. You know, I know it's counterintuitive, but if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Because we've all seen the girls who complain about jerks. By the way, every woman who has kids is divorced from a jerk. The ex-husband is a jerk, he's a deadbeat, he's irresponsible, he's, he's a reprobate, he's a prisoner, he's this, he's that. Ever wonder why she said, hey... I'm not using a diaphragm. Go for it, baby. Go for it. Let's make babies. Come on, you irresponsible stud. Do me. I mean, isn't it amazing how many women used to be married to jerks? Had their kids with a jerk. Picked a complete a-hole. An out-and-out -out reprobate. A screw-around. A womanizer. A drunk. A drug addict. That's who they have their kids with. That's who they're hot for. Guys who lie, guys who cheat, guys who steal, guys who go to prison, guys who drink too much, smoke too much, guys who shoot up too much. That's what turns women on. Acting like a complete jerk. Instead of fighting it, Instead of trying to change the world, why don't you go with the flow? Why not simply treat women the way they want to be treated? Like crap. Save yourself the long, lonely Friday nights when you're sitting there watching ESPN at home and feeling sorry for yourself while you're drinking yourself into another stupor. That drinking habit could make it possible for you to hold on to a woman. All you have to do is get drunk and be a lout. Then you're well on your way. Women cannot, women cannot resist guys who are irresponsible, deadbeats, drug addicts, alcoholics. They want to fix you. It's like this old house. You're, it's like extreme makeover. Home edition. I mean, <laughs> they want to take reclamation projects. They want to buy run-down houses. And they want to, to, to renovate. If you come perfect, there you are with your neat little apartment and your bills all paid on time and you drink water all day and maybe the, the strongest drink you have all day is an Arnold Palmer and you show up on time every time you go someplace, you're on time coming home from work, you're on time when the two of you have a date, you're on time for the opera or Phantom of the Opera or whatever other chick flick or chick activity she invites you to. She will get bored. There's nothing to fix. There's nothing to fix up. Women love unpredictability. They love taming a bad boy. They love diamonds in the rough. They like guys who are big lumps of clay they can mold into pussified vases that can sit in the corner. That is what women want. They don't want you, Poindexter, to be Mr. Perfect. They don't. All you boys who try to be so good, so perfect, so thoughtful, so sensitive, you're all getting crapped on. Every one of you. 
You ought to be the irresponsible jerk you know you have inside you. Women flock to guys like you. Remember, every day you spend showing how reliable you are, how wonderful you are, how thoughtful you are, some guy who never returns her phone calls, some guy who gets drunk and curses at her, some guy who says he'll be home at midnight and doesn't show up till 6 a.m. or doesn't show up until Tuesday, that's who's getting laid, not you. It's time you become that guy. Or at least appear to be that guy. Because that is what turns them on. That is what they love. In my time dating women, nothing gets a woman hotter than when I put her on ice. That's it. Put her on ice. The minute she starts getting out of control or out of hand, the minute she starts trying to tell me what to do or starts trying to latch on to me, or the minute she starts becoming a born-again virgin or starts getting, ooh, out of a headache, ooh, I want to watch television, ooh, the minute that stuff starts, you put them on ice. It's an aphrodisiac. They want to be disciplined. There are bad girls who need to be disciplined. Not with your hand. Not with a fist, not with a knife, not with a broken bottle. No, 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 no. Just benign neglect. It's so effective. Treating women like crap is an art form. It's a goddamn art form. And I must say, I admire the artists and craftsmen who are really good at it. You are the guys who are getting laid all the time. So, Poindexter, this hour I want you to sit back, put your feet up, have a stick of juicy fruit or whatever it is you enjoy in your free time there. You know, a bottle of water. Maybe a little glass of lemonade. A little country time. Okay. Sit back, Poindexter, and listen to the real bad boys this hour. Because I want you boys to call in and tell me all of the various ways recently that you've been treating women like crap. Tom. Tom. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You really do change lives. And I mean, so many people want to say that you're a bad guy and all that, and it's, uh, it's crazy. I We're mean, doing important work here. It's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> Tom is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of our program. All right. We want to hear from America's biggest bad boys. Tell us how you treat women like crap. Jonathan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Father. Yes, son. Hey, uh, I just want to say, I, I was previously the little whip, wussy boy that went to the Fred Siegel for the girl's birthday and dropped every piece of cash that I had in my wallet. And, you know, then you get dumped like a month later. It's like, oh, I'm going back out with my ex-boyfriend, you know, the guy who was cheating on her in the past. That's and right. Tre treating her like crap. And uh -huh. I, was like, I was like the nice guy, right? And I was just like, God, this nice guy stuff just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So listen to Like Us 101. Now I just say it like it is. Like, listen, honey, I'm 33 years old. I'm single. I owe nobody any explanation of this, this simple fact that I want to party. I want to have sex. And if you don't, if you don't mind not getting called the next day, then we're going to have a great time tonight. And a lot of my, a lot of my friends now are saying, how are you doing it? You know, I could probably lose five pounds, but I've got the game going. It's just like whatever. It works with strippers. It works with girls at bars. It works on bachelorette parties in Vegas. Everything. Like us 101 is it. I love that. And you are treating these girls like crap. I wouldn't really say like crap. It's just like my way or the highway. If you don't like it, I'll find the next one. And uh, you get very little objection to that. I get very little. And if, and if you know, and if I do get some objection, next Next. That's right. Next. So I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my uh, a-hole soul, and it's working great. I appreciate it, Father. Proud of you, son. 
Thank you. Appreciate the call. I'm bursting with pride, like only a father can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Garrett on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. What up? Not much, Garrett. Hey, the uh, you know I used to be a little puss boy back in the day, but um, you know what you uh, what you talked about. You know you try to run around, you try to talk to broads. It just don't work out like that. You just got to kick in the corner. Mm-hmm. They always want attention. They always want you to look at them and all this other. But they, uh, you know, you just gotta. How, how do you do it? Well, for one, you don't give them attention to begin with. And then when you do give them attention and you start talking to one, they want you to come hang out with their friends. They want you to come hang out and meet their people. You tell them, you just come hang out with my friends. You meet me at a bar. You meet me at a club. Don't go to dinner with them. Don't spend money on them. Have them buy you drinks if you got the balls to say it. Yeah. And I want you to tell the boys out there who are afraid to do these things, how well do they work? 110 percent it's only 180 my whole life around and then your magnitude of broads is off the richter scale mm-hmm. you're gonna you, you know you're gonna start coming around with broads that are just off the hook your buddy's gonna be wondering what's going on you know this and that mm-hmm. you know it's just the the, the it, it's endless on what you can do yeah no i know it and uh, you're right um you know i keep getting these uh the, these nice guys these good boys who call in here they complain that they're so reliable and so generous and so thoughtful and so sensitive, and women just don't understand. They don't. You're damn right they don't understand, because women are used to being treated like crap. They they crave it. They say they hate it, but that's who they have sex with. Yeah, it's funny. You you can either sit in the stands, or you can be on the field playing. That's right. It's up to you. Good points, Garrett. Very nice. Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. You know what, Tom? I, first of all, I've got to start off by saying if it wasn't for you, honestly, I'm going to say from the bottom of my heart, honestly, if it wasn't for you, I would be married and miserable for three years now. Mm-hmm. Because of you, I got out of my engagement, and I've been happy ever since. Uh-huh. Every day that's gone by has just been a, a, a whole ray of new sunshine coming out. But... It's true what they say, Tom. The bad boys do get the most ass, and I'm going to talk about a girl named Nikki that uh, I've been banging for around a year and a half now. I took her out once on a Tuesday night to some little restaurant, paid like 35 bucks, banged her that night. Ever since then, been banging her ever since, and she knows I'm seeing other women. She knows it. Mm-hmm. She gives me crap for it, but she can't do nothing about it because I tell her, look, I'm single, you're single. You go do what you want, I'll go do what I want. And she's always on my jock strap. And it works. Wow. It absolutely works. And her friend, been banging her friend, she found out she's still banging me. That's amazing. It, 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 it's, it is. It's absolutely amazing. And uh, she sees me at the clubs. I'm banging around with other girls. She still calls me up at 8 at night. Are you going home with her or with me? Sometimes with her, sometimes with me, with her. You know, with, with it doesn't matter. I'm going home with somebody. So, Perfect and, and you know what? It's funny. It, she's a she's a top ten, very low self esteem, very low. Oh, love that. Thirty six double D. She's five eleven, beautiful, and uh, she's always she's always going downtown on me, Tom. Oh, God, I love that. And her friends. <laughs> really? I love it. It's it's great. All these these women are just absolutely stupid. You know, absolutely stupid. The more you treat them like crap, you know. I don't call them on the weekends. I do everything you say, and it works. Two to T. Love you. Love it. Love you, man. I'm now, now you. tell the boys out there who are still sending roses and still being thoughtful. Tell them, tell them what they're missing. Suckers, suckers. I haven't. You know, this girl Nikki that I've been banging around. She keeps asking me, "When are you going to take me out to dinner? When are you going to take me to the movies?" Like, we'll come home and make a movie. That's about it. Right. You know, I told her I don't take women out to dinner. And, and you know what's funny, Tom? When I met her, when I met her at the bar, I met her at Saddle Ranch up there at Universal City. Sure. Um, we were at the bar. I went up, and we both went up to the bar. I ordered a drink, and she looked at me like I was going to order her one. And I said, "I don't buy women drinks. I don't." And she respect. She liked that so much that she ended up buying me a drink. Perfect. This is what I tell the guys all the time. I wish these guys would understand. You got to call my brothers up, Tom. I'm telling you, they're still trying to be the Mister Nice Guy, and they keep telling them what works and what doesn't. And I'm telling, dude, you got to listen to Tom. Perfect. 
Great. Thank you so much, Tom. Uh, can you blow me up African style? African tribal style. Here you go. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge, 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 so penza. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, long time, first time. Thank you, Mark. Yes, sir. I just want to say, like all the others, thank you so much, man. I used to be one of those wimps, and I was out there as a musician. I'm on the road all around the country playing for rock stars and all around the world, and. I had them coming to me, and I was still trying to be the nice guy. And everybody else in the band is getting it, and I wasn't. And then finally I, I listened to you, and I woke up, and then I got all these babes all around the country. I bang them after the gig, and then I tell them, hey, yeah, you know, call me up. I fly to L.A. for a couple of days or something. And then I just blow them off for a while. And then, of course, the next time we're anywhere near their part of the country, they're all over my jock. Just That's right. all over it. That's right. Time. Anytime you ice them, they can't get enough. They can't. That's just the way it works, big time. That's right. No doubt about it. And most musicians know this instinctively. That's uh, that's why they became musicians, as you know. Of course, of course. Anybody that says they're not doing it out there to get laid is in denial or lying. That's big time. Exactly right. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for waking us up out there. Mark, I am here to help. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I make six figures, and I'm a big guy, but I tell you, when they see the wad, they're all over me. Which wad is that? <laughs> the cash wad. How well hung is your wallet? It's very well hung. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles, it's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. We're talking to the baddest boys in America and trying to find out how they, the pros, treat women like crap. It's Tom on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Love the show. Thank you. I think the key to this is uh, to understand the most psychology of these women and why they like to be treated like crap. Uh -huh. uh, I have a brother-in-law, and uh, his six-year-old daughter, I've watched her now for the last six years, and uh, he consistently, and occasionally when he, she, he gives her attention, she's uh, so happy to receive some form of attention that I realize it's kind of a high for them. And uh, they only get that when they've been treated like crap for a while. So uh, in my experience before I was married, of course, I found just, uh, just my crap always works. Yeah. Yeah, and um, the, the guys who don't treat women like crap, they're the ones who uh, get the late night phone calls. Oh! I, Tom, I was one of those guys until I listened to you. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I was about 25, and I listened to your advice, and uh, it's amazing. Uh, I had a roommate. She was smoking hot, and I'd watch all these guys treat her uh, like a princess, and uh, only the ones that treat her like crap got a piece of ass. Wow. Tom, I'm proud. Thank you. Thank you. Take me out with the bong hit. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Bob on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I gotta thank you for uh, for having this show. Uh, my buddy uh, put me on to you guys about uh, two weeks ago. He sold the farm, but uh, I'm still I'm still active and trying. And this whole bad boy thing's totally been working for me. Uh, I think it has something to do with the whole alpha beta thing. Uh, if you let the women be the alpha. I mean, they just walk all, walk all over you. If you're the alpha, they just listen. They're submissive. Uh, you just tell them what to do. They they listen. Uh, this girl, Angel, that I'm about to pick up, prime example. I I picked her up. Within 20 minutes, we were already and didn't spend a penny. Ever hey, 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 we, hey, 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 you can't say that word. All right, man. Maybe in Canada you can say that on the radio, but not here. <laughs> yeah, we've been screwing, and it, it's been great. I, and then your advice, I, I've been telling everyone about your show for last week. Uh, you gotta listen to this Tom guy. He's on to something, man. He's on to something. Uh, and people don't know. I mean, women think they got us, but we really got them in the long run. I mean, it, it, it's amazing what you've been telling us. I mean, I've been the whole $40 date thing. I've been 
I've been doing that. The only thing I did wonder, I have a buddy Dennis has been trying to get in, and uh, he had a he had a tough time there. He had to bring a rent a rent a car because his car was broken, uh-huh. and uh, he had to spend eighty five bucks. And he's like, "Oh, I'm not following Tom's rules. I'm not following Tom's rules." And he wanted to see if that was okay. But no, well, your car is broken down. You got to have a car. Well, he the way he put it was, "Hey, it's, it's a rent a car, so it's like a hotel on wheels." So he tried to pick up his other girl, and he. So he picked up two girls in the same car, banged them the same night. It was, so you advertised the cost. If it, it was eighty-five bucks, that means it was forty-two fifty a girl. Oh, see, Tom, that's where you make it all justifiable, eh? Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, I don't have too much else to say, but uh, take me out with something unique. Something unique. Something for the boys up in Canada. Um. All right. Well, let's see. Something no one ever asks for. <laughs> <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, he wanted something unique. Rudy, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Okay, Rudy. Hey, okay. So listen, uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, my girlfriend caught me, you know, looking at another girl, and you know how that goes. You know what I'm saying? It usually turns into a whole drama or whatever. But uh, anyways, about five five or ten minutes later, she goes, "By the way, I saw you looking at that girl." You know, and, and I just looked at her and I go, you know what? For starters, I wasn't looking; I was staring. Okay, <laughs> there's a difference. Yeah, I love that. And, and yeah, you know, it was just funny, and, and you know, just just while uh, you know, we have all these Poindexter's listening. I have a spin on the uh, Hail Mary that worked for me a few years oh, ago. Oh, love to hear it. Okay, so this girl, you know, I was dating, and um, you know, she tells me, you know, she's you know, Mr. Period or whatever, this and that, and so I was like. You know, I'm, I, yeah, I got some skills, you know what I'm saying? So I just, like, I, you know, I told her, I go, uh, I mean, it took me a little while to come up with this, you know what I'm saying? But I, I told her that, uh, you know, I've been meaning to tell her or whatever, but, but, uh, you know, I kind of had this family secret or whatever that, uh, I've been meaning to tell her about. Mm-hmm. And she's like, okay, so, you know, I have her full attention, you know, and she's like, I go, well, you know, I had a brother that was younger than me that was born, you know, retarded or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was always really worried about that, you know, about yeah. having the kids and stuff. And I know I should have told you about it or whatever. And, dude, she couldn't get an abortion fast enough, dude. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And it didn't cost me a penny. I mean, she was just, like, totally sympathetic to me. And just, like, you know, it was, it was, I was ready to grab pictures. You know, I don't have a brother, obviously, obviously or whatever, but I was ready to grab pictures of some guy and say it was my brother, you know, that, mm-hmm. that was retarded but passed away or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that it was this dark, dark family secret that you know don't ever say it to anybody in my family <laughs> or whatever. You know what I mean? But uh, I mean, oh my God! As soon as she heard that, man, she was just like she ran for the hills. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that was pretty sweet. You know. I, I love that, Rudy. I love it. Sunny on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Dad. It is awesome to talk to you, Sunny. How are you? Pretty good. Um, actually, uh, mine is about a future um, incident that I'm about to. It's about to occur. Well, I've known this girl for um, a couple weeks and. Uh, she's real cute, and uh, I've just been trying to get in her pants, whatever, whatever. But um, all this, and I treated her like crap, like a true one-on-one student. And all of a sudden, I kind of got slipped up because you know, as a charm a girl can have sometimes, um, I started to be nice to her, and that's that's where I messed up. So, and I've noticed that she's kind of been, you know, uh, leaning towards like not wanting to date me at all or anything so tomorrow tomorrow what i'm gonna do is on my way when i'm supposed to go pick her up and take her to her house when i go to school i'm just gonna leave her really i think that'll get her going i think it's gonna jump something up it believe me uh any way you treat a woman like crap is effective what do you think she'll be happy when all of a sudden she realizes i didn't forget about her of course <laughs> awesome. Okay, could you take me out Lacey Peterson style with a bunket? That would be tasteless, Sonny. No doubt about that. Thanks, Tom. Mike, on the Tom Likas show. We're talking to America's bad boys. Hello. What's going on, Tom? Not much, Mike. I just wanted to say that you were a legend. And uh, I was actually hanging out with my chick probably 10 minutes ago. I had to drop her off uh, at her car. She was going to work. And she was all pissed off at me because we were listening to, to listen to your show on the radio. And uh, she knows I'm an ass. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to say uh, I treat girls like crap all the time. I have to say for the past four years, I'm only 21, so for the past four years, 
uh, you know, I'll go out to the bar and I'll be seeing a chick. I'll go out to the bar and I'll, you know, I'll get tanked. And then uh, call, they end up calling me up, you know, later on that night. And I tell them off, like, you know, don't ever call me ever again. They end up calling me, like, the next day, like, hey, you want to hang out? Like, mm-hmm. you know, you were such a jerk last night. And they still call back. And, like, the chick that I'm seeing now gets pissed because I still have girls from a year ago calling me, still wanting to hang out. They just, like... They can't let go, and I. I and that's because you put them on ice. You haven't been talking to them, and so they they can't get enough. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. All all my boys are the same way. They're like, oh, Mike, you know, how do you do it? I'm like, jerk to them. And I tell them off, and they they all come back. I just, it's awesome. Yeah. And I have to say, you have the best show out there. And uh, my boys at PJ is actually listening to it right now. He told me to put it on, you know, because what you guys were talking about today. What'd you tell your girl when she got upset that you were listening? No, I just, you know, whatever. She, I mean, she knows. She's like, you and PJ are the same way. My buddy PJ called and was like, you got to listen to it. It's so us. So, you know, I put you on, and I was like, oh, yeah. So she was pretty pissed, but, you know, that's that's how I am. I try to be nice to her, you know, like, you know, take her out and stuff, but, you know, I, I just can't do it. I'm such a jerk. Like, I try to be nice, and I just always end up... Why even try? Yeah, exactly. I mean, look how well it works when you treat her like crap. Exactly, and I haven't even spent one penny on this chick. I've been with her for about a month now, and she takes me out to dinner. I don't even have to spend a penny on her. Oh, God, I love hearing that. That's music to my ears. Yes, I know. All right, Tom, well, uh, that's all I have to say. Uh, you have a good one. All right, Mike, I'm very, very proud. Tom, like us, Tom, like us. 100, 500, Tom, Tom. Yeah. There are three groups you can get away with making fun of. The deaf, because they're not listening anyway. Those who are mentally retarded, how the hell are they going to organize a group? And thirdly, people with Alzheimer's. Even if they object to the content of the program, they will forget to show up at the protest. Those are the three groups we attack regularly. This is the Tom Likas Show. Tom, that's our telephone number. We're talking to America's bad boys about the ways they treat women like crap. Barry on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Tom, you are the man. How you doing, brother? Do you care, Barry? Oh, dude, I care more than anyone that you've ever heard of, man. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you for all the rules that you've applied to me. I used to be a nice guy. I used to sit and listen to a bitch and complain and nah, nah, nah. And you know what? I got tired of it. I listened to you. I treat them like crap. I, uh, I, I don't understand these bitches. I honestly don't. And, and I, I have to thank you for it. And now uh, you get more ass than a toilet seat. Oh, my God. Like a Chinese toilet seat, Tom. What are some of the things you do, Barry? You know, number one, when I, go, uh, I do go out with their friends. But I give their friends more attention than I give them. I'll, sit there, I'll give them all the attention. You know, oh, oh, you look, you look pretty. You know, it. You know, that dress does look nice. Stuff like that. And you know what? They eat it up. And then when I go back with them, it's it's pouncing time, brother. <laughs> you know, and, I, and like I said, I can't thank you enough for stressing this. And I pass it on to my boys, and they don't listen. They're so damn vulnerable and and stupid and gullible to these women. You that just I, I means want... more chicks for you. Oh, oh yeah, it does. So you know what? I try passing them on with the Tom Likas belief, and you know what? They don't listen. Hey, like you said, man, more for me. That's right. Hey, you take me out with the bomb here, buddy. Here you go, Barry. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Rebecca on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello? Yes. Tom, Tom, Tom. Being a female, it's hard, but tell it like it is, buddy. Tell it like it is. Really? The truth hurts, but it's definitely true. Are you one of these women? I have been well trained and treated like... But it works. <laughs> it so works. when a guy treats you like crap, you are fascinated. You are intrigued. <laughs> it's been a lot Here's a years, guy with confidence. You know I know he sees other women, but ain't shit can do about it because I just can't. We gotta watch our mouth. wait. We gotta watch our mouths on the radio, Rebecca. Oh, okay. You we'll might have heard of the FCC. Okay, we'll do. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, so that, I just wanted to put it out there for motivation and whatnot. That uh, you, you tell them, you tell them, you tell them, Tom. Treat those girls like crap. That's right. I got one of your first-hand students right here in the car with me, but I was told that uh. So I just had to tell it like it is. I'm glad you did. 
<laughs> so you got any questions for me since I'm a female and I'm calling? You got all these guys calling? Well, I already know the the score here. Uh, we, if we treat you girls like crap, you come back for more. That's right. And you know what's even funny is he can go out and do whatever he wants, and I'll still call him, do you want to do this, do you want to do that? And he'll say, no, I got plans. Oh, okay. But then you'll probably, some nights you're probably sitting around waiting to hear from him, and he doesn't call. Sure enough. But yeah. you know what? That just make it all the better when he does. And it's so messed up. <laughs> uh, it's completely messed up, and I hope the boys heard what you had to say there, Rebecca, because it's so true. Our email address is my name. It's Tom Ant. BlowMeUpTom.com The Tom Likas Show.